This video will discuss the radial wave functions of the hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model system. So our model for the hydrogen atom is we have a proton of mass mp which is fixed at the origin of our coordinate system. We have an electron of mass me some distance r away from that proton. It's free to move anywhere in three-dimensional space but instead of doing things in terms of Cartesian coordinates x, y, and z we're preferring to do things in terms of spherical polar coordinates, r, theta, and phi, because the key distance is this r for how far our, our electron is from the origin, which is our proton. So we derived our Hamiltonian operator in the first video here, h equals negative h bar squared over 2me, mass of the electron, times the Laplacian operator, del squared. That's the kinetic energy plus our potential energy, which is a Coulomb potential acting between these two charged particles. They, it's a negative because they have opposite signs and are attracting one another. Potential energy is negative charge of the electron squared over 4 pi epsilon naught times r. So our Schrodinger equation, h psi equals e psi, is this Hamiltonian acting on psi nlm, three quantum numbers nl and m, times the spherical, and it's a function of the spherical polar coordinates, r, theta, and phi, equals an energy, which only depends on the principal quantum number, n, times our wave function, again, psi nlm of r, theta, and phi. From the previous video, we saw that the energy levels of this depended on the principal quantum number, n, and were equal to a bunch of constants, negative mass of the electron, magnitude of the charge of the electron to the fourth divided by 32 pi squared permittivity of free space epsilon naught squared times Planck's constant over 2 pi h bar squared times 1 over n squared our quantum number <clears throat> which starts at 1 and goes up as an integer all the way to infinity. So in this particular video we are interested in the radial part of our wave function. So our wave function depends on these three, print, these three quantum numbers and depends on the three spherical polar coordinates, r, theta, and phi. This can be decomposed into two, a product of two wave functions, one which is a radial wave function which depends on r and the quantum numbers n and l, and another part called the spherical harmonics, which is the angular wave function and is exactly equal to the wave functions we saw from the rigid rotor model system. So these are the spherical harmonics y, l, m of theta and phi, depends on the two quantum numbers l and m, and the angular coordinates in spherical polar theta and phi. These three quantum numbers are all integers, so they all belong to the set of integers n is greater than or equal to 1, as we saw up here. L starts at 0 and goes up to the value of n. M goes from minus L all the way to plus L. So we choose n first. Given n, we can choose our values of L. Given L, we can choose our values of M. All right, so our radial wave function is a function of R and depends on the quantum numbers n and L. It's going to have three components to it has a normalization constant, a polynomial called the associated Laguerre polynomials, and a polynomial times an exponential. So let's break these down into those components. First we have the normalization constant. We have the square root of n minus l minus 1 quantity factorial over 2n times n plus 1 factorial quantity cubed. Then we have times 2n over a naught quantity to the power l to plus 3 halves. So this a naught is the Bohr radius. You'll notice it appears multiple times in the wave function. And that's because things are de defined in terms of the Bohr radius here. So if you go ahead and use units of Bohr's or Bohr radius for your length, then you don't have to deal with all these a naughts and carry those around everywhere. everywhere but it just normalizes everything to the same scale to making sure you're using the right units for your length. All right, next we have the associated Laguerre polynomials. 
L of, we have two integers that pick what the polynomial is, n plus, n plus L and 2L plus 1. And it is a function of 2R over n a naught. So it involved constants times powers of this 2R over n a naught. So the associated Laguerre polynomials, they have a generating function that we could use. Usually we're just going to look them up in a table if we need them, but you could derive them if you needed to. So LAB of x is equal to x to the minus b, e to the x over a factorial. Then you take the eighth derivative with respect to x of the quantity x to the a plus b times e to the minus x. Then our final part of our wave function is a polynomial times an exponential. We have r to the l times e to the minus r over n a naught. So this is a decaying exponential. This will decay with distance, so we are exponentially decaying as we go away from the origin. Gets scaled by a normalization constant and then maybe multiplied by some polynomial, giving it some shape in the middle. All right, so we're going to define a convenient uh, quantity to work in terms of here. Uh, we're going to define the quantity rho. Rho equals zr over a naught. a naught, once again, is the Bohr radius. Z is the charge of whatever our atom is so in units of how many protons. So Z of a proton equals plus 1. So we can use these wave functions for the hydrogen atom, but we can also use them for any atom that has just one electron. So we could use it for hydrogen, or helium plus, or lithium 2 plus, beryllium 3 plus, anything that has some number of protons at the origin, and then an electron, a single electron. So those are called hydrogen-like atoms. So R10, n equals 1, L equals 0 is equal to our normalization constant 2 z over a naught to the 3 halves then e to the minus rho so that's just a purely decaying exponential this is the radial part of our 1s orbital 1s function r20 n equals 2 l equals 0 that's a 2s function constant times 2 minus rho e to the minus rho over 2 so that starts high decays low, goes below zero, then decays back to zero again. It has what's called a node in the middle. We'll discuss that in future videos. R21 of R is the 2p radial function, n equals 2, l equals 1. Constant times rho e to the minus rho over 2. Notice these are decaying faster now at higher values of n because they have a, uh, div they're divided there. R30, the 3s function, a constant times 27 minus 18 rho plus 2 rho squared. So now it's a quadratic polynomial for this Laguerre function. e to the minus rho over 3. All right, we have R31, the 3p function, constant times rho times 6 minus rho e to the minus rho over 3. R32, the 3d function, a constant times rho squared times e to the minus rho over 3. So we'll look at these in some animations or some plots in the future, but these are the basics of what these functions look like. The radial part depends on the quantum numbers n and l. It's a function of r, the distance from the proton. This n and l specifies what type of function it is, whether it's 1s, 2s, 2p, 3s, 3p, 3d, etc. And this function is a normalization constant times the associated Laguerre polynomial for that set of quantum numbers times a decaying exponential where our wave function decays the further away we get from our origin at our proton.